Hi, we're out on the range today, so please bear with gunfire you hear in the background. And today we're talking about a Gila's 12-gauge mini shell. You might ask, what's a 12-gauge mini shell? Well, let me show you a close-up of them. Now on your left is a Federal 12-gauge 2 and 3 quarter inch shell, and the Aguila mini shell is 12-gauge, it's the same diameter, but it's a lot shorter. Now an interesting thing about the length of shot shells, this box is labeled 2 and 3 quarter inches, but when I put the ruler up next to it, it's only 2 and a quarter inches long. Most shot shells are crimped, and when the shell goes off, that crimp will open, and when it does, it'll make this shell about 2 and 3 quarter inches long. Now the Aguila mini shell box is labeled 1 and 3 quarter inches, but put the ruler up to it, and it's only about an inch and a half long. Again, it's crimped, and that crimp will open up when it goes off. Now, looking at how small this shell is, I presume that we're giving away a significant amount of power. So I'll shoot it next to some standard 12 and see how they compare. But in comparing the power of shot shells, there's a few things that go into it, such as you would hope to shoot them through shotguns with similar barrel lengths. Well, since these are both 12 gauge, I can shoot them through the same gun. But in measuring the power of shot shells, there's two main things you measure. Pellet count and power per pellet. What kind of velocity are you getting out of your shot load? The only really fair way to compare pellet count is if you have the same size shot. Now these Aguila shells are buckshot, so that's what we're talking about today. However, they've mixed the shot size. There are 11 pellets in this shell seven pellets of number four buckshot, and then four pellets of number one buckshot. And much to my chagrin, I couldn't find standard 12 gauge shells with a similar configuration. So what I'm going to do today is compare the Aguila mini shells to standard shells that are loaded with number four buckshot. Now there's a few different configurations of that. This box is 12 gauge, two and three quarter inch, number four buck, 34 pellet. But what's far more common is 12 gauge, two and three quarter inch, number four buck, 27 pellet. So that's what I'll be shooting today. And we'll shoot these side by side and see just how much power we're giving away with the mini shells and see if there's any advantages to these short shells. One of the things I want to compare is pattern size and pattern density. Now our standard 12 has 27 pellets and our Aguila shell has 11 less than half as many. So are we going to get a pattern that's the same size but not nearly as dense, or are we going to get a much tighter pattern? Well, I've got my Mossberg 500 with its improved cylinder bore barrel, and I'll go back 15 yards and I'll shoot the top target with the standard 12 27 pellet, and the lower target with our Aguila 11 pellet. We'll see how they compare. Well, their upper target, when I put a ruler on here and measure the pellets that are farthest apart, it's a 12-inch pattern. With the Aguila, when I do the same thing, it's a 13-inch pattern. So even though there appears to be plenty of hits on the target, it most certainly is not holding a tighter pattern. So I'll put up a couple of new targets, do this drill again, and see if we can confirm these results. Now this one impact here in the middle, that's a fluke and I'm not going to count that particular hit. But we see with our 27 pellet buckshot, we're still getting a pattern that's about 12 inches. And in this case with the Aguila shot, we got a pattern that was about 11 inches. So not a significantly tighter pattern. And with half as many pellets, not nearly as dense a pattern. Although it does appear that there are plenty of hits on the intended target. Now let's compare velocity. I've got my chronograph set up at four yards. Normally I set it up at seven, but with the realities of shotgun pattern entropy, I figured four would be safer, at least safer for the chronograph. And I'll start with the two and three quarter inch shells. 1257. 1264. 1279. And 1235. Now let's try the Aguila shells. Well, I crunched the numbers and there they are. And you can see with our Federal 2 and 3 quarter inch ammunition, we get a mean velocity of 1,258. With our Aguila mini shells, even though they have less than half as much shot, we get a velocity of 1,130. 
that's 128 feet per second less, and that's significantly less. Now off camera, just as a basis of comparison, I used my Mossberg 410 and shot some 410 ammunition that's three inch shells, and it's nine pellets of number four buckshot. And we see a mean velocity of 1,193. That's still 63 feet per second more than the Aguila mini shells. Now granted, they have 11 pellets compared to nine, and at least some of those pellets are bigger than the number four buckshot and the 410 shells. But still, they don't seem to compare all that favorably with 410 ammunition. But these numbers are just numbers. The real question is, are these Aguila 12 gauge mini shells sufficient to get the job done? And of course that would depend on what the job is. I've done some deer hunting with shotguns with buckshot and based on the results I've seen here today, I would say these would not be sufficient for that task. But that's not really the job they were designed for. As near as I can tell, the job they're designed for is anti-personnel purposes in a home defense shotgun. Not for police or military use, but specifically for your home defense shotgun. So would they be sufficient for that? Let's see if we can put that to the test. Most of you knew this was coming, and we're going to shoot the meat target. Now for those who haven't seen it, it's leather jacket skin, followed by pork chop pectoral, pork ribs, a bag of oranges to simulate lung tissue, more pork ribs on the back, four layers of t-shirt on the front, four layers on the back, and the whole thing is followed by the new and improved high-tech fleece bullet stop. In a home defense shooting, the range will probably be quite short, so I'm going to shoot from five yards, and we'll start with our Federal 12 gauge, two and three quarter inch, number four buck, 27 pellet. At five yards, that shot has not spread out very much, so on our ribs on the front, the pattern is barely bigger around than the bore. But we can see that the pellets just annihilated our orange lung tissue. And as far as the ribs on the back, there's several pellets stuck in the ribs and a few went through. And those that went through were all stopped by the first layer of fleece. So 12 gauge, two and three quarter inch loaded with number four buckshot seems to be very effective and has very little potential for over penetration through the intended target. Now let's see how the mini shells compare. So with our mini shells we see damage to the ribs on the front, pretty good damage to the orange lung tissue, although less damage because there were less pellets. And our ribs on the back are basically the same story. Some of the pellets stuck in the ribs, some went through into the first layer of fleece, just not as many pellets stuck in there because there were not as many pellets. Overall, though, I'd say this looks like a relatively effective round. The results, I'd have to say, are not bad at all. So the mini shells are not as powerful as conventional 12-gauge ammunition. But based on the results of the meat target, they may be powerful enough. You be the judge. Also, at the store where I bought them, their price was very comparable with conventional 12-gauge ammunition. Another advantage they can give you is because they're very short, you can get more of them into a shotgun's tube magazine. This Remington Model 11 has a four-shot tube, but I was able to load seven of these mini shells in it. Now that sounds like quite an advantage, but is it? Let's find out. Malfunction. It didn't even have enough power to eject that empty casing out of the chamber. And now I've got a double feed because this gun was never intended to shoot shells with this short profile. So there are at least some autoloaders out there that won't shoot this type of ammunition. This Mossberg Model 500 has a three inch chamber, but when loaded with two and three quarter inch shells, the tube capacity is seven. It'll hold seven plus one. I just loaded it with the Aguila mini shells. It now has 12 plus one in it. That's a lot of rounds but will they cycle correctly through this pump action shotgun? No. Also what you didn't see was that when I was off camera shooting the meat target and things like that, I had several malfunctions with this ammunition. So not only will it not function in some auto loaders, it appears it won't function properly in some pumps. What about a double barrel? I think it's safe to say the mini shells will function properly in this, but I do want to use this gun to show you recoil. Watch how much recoil there is from these mini shells. 
Now that's not bad for a 12 gauge shotgun. Let's see how that compares to our conventional 27 pellet number four buckshot in our two and three quarter inch shells. A big difference. Well, it's getting late and we're losing light, but what can we make of all of this? Well, we saw that the Aguila ammunition did not have as much power as the conventional 12 gauge ammo does, but it looks like under some circumstances the power it has could be sufficient. And it also seems that it can offer two real advantages, less recoil and increasing your magazine capacity. But to what degree are those real advantages? A lot of home defense type shotguns like this Mossberg, it has a capacity of seven plus one. And as far as legitimate self-defense shootings, where the citizen is armed with a shotgun, I'm unaware of any case in the United States where someone fired more than five rounds, let alone the seven plus one it will hold, let alone the 12 plus one that your Aguila allows it to hold. So I don't see having a lot more rounds as all that big of an advantage. Certainly not a disadvantage, but perhaps not a really big advantage. And that advantage becomes null and void when the shotgun won't properly cycle the ammunition. Now, as far as the advantage of less recoil, that's a very real thing. Some people are recoil sensitive. But you might think, okay, for those people, why don't they go buy a shotgun like this 410? And there's other 410s that'll hold a lot more rounds than this one does. And that is a viable solution for a lot of people. However, some people live in jurisdictions where they're allowed to have guns, but the laws make it very difficult for them to buy guns. So if they already have a 12 gauge, going out and buying an additional shotgun might not be possible for them. And some people just don't have the financial means to make that a viable solution. So for them, perhaps buying a box of ammunition is a better solution than trying to get an additional gun. However, again, if the gun they have won't cycle the ammunition, then the ammunition isn't worth much. Now, I would hate to think that this Aguila ammunition has such a narrow focus that the only use it really has is for people who have single shot or double barreled 12 gauges and are recoil sensitive and are unable to go get an additional gun. That's a pretty narrow focus and I would hope that the ammunition has more use than that. Although based on today's results, I'm not sure that it does. So as always, don't try this at home on what you call a professional and thanks for watching the Aguila 12 gauge mini shell video.